So I want to introduce what I think is the most important Fourier transform property. And this is the Plancherelle theorem. And what the Plancherelle theorem states is that if you integrate from minus infinity to infinity, the modulus squared or the absolute value squared of some function f of x dx, that is equal to the exact same thing with the Fourier transform. Uh, with the caveat being that you have to use the physicist's convention, and that is the convention where the forward Fourier transform is given by this. 1 over root 2 pi, integral minus infinity to infinity, f of x e to the minus i k x dx. And the inverse is given by uh, f of k, I guess I'm using hat now, uh, f hat of k, 1 over square root 2 pi, and then same type of deal. dk. All right, so if we're, if we're using this convention right here, then this result is true. Otherwise, we're going to have some other factors to worry about. But, but in this convention, this, this holds. Okay, uh, this is great. And this is actually extremely important. And, and this is why people like the physicists uh, convention, because uh, in this case, the Fourier transform is said to be unitary. And, and really what that and really this right here is a statement of unitarity. It's saying that uh, the length of this function f of x, or, or, or the, the integral of the of its if its uh, of its value squared, is is unchanged when you go between f of x and the Fourier transform of f of x. Um, so this this is important, especially for quantum mechanics. Um, but but this isn't a quantum mechanics video. So uh, the only question I'm going to ask is just all right. Well, how do we actually show this thing? And uh, to do it, I'm going to start on this right-hand side and see if I can manipulate it into looking like something on the left-hand side. So let's start. So uh, the the first rule, and the first thing you usually do when you have something like this is you try and uh, write this guy right here in terms of the Fourier transform. And so if we do that, what's going to happen? Well, uh, we have uh, well, absolute value squared on this guy. So we're going to have what? We're going to have a 1 over 2 pi out in front. From, from each of the two integrals. Um, and then we're gonna have what we're gonna have. So our first integral might be f of x prime. And so I'm just gonna change these to some dummy variables. So f of x prime e to the minus i kx prime dx prime. So that'll be one integral. On the next one, um, same thing. Integral minus infinity to infinity f of x double prime e to the plus i k x double prime dx double prime. So the reason that I have this minus i k x uh, over here and this plus i k x over here is because uh, the length of a complex valued function is going to be equal to the function itself times its complex conjugate. And so, so really I should have a, uh, a bar over here or a complex conjugate of this function as well. Okay, uh, so this looks this is this is this is just a restatement of this guy up here, but now let's do uh, the usual trick, uh, and we're in, and the usual trick is that we're going to uh, combine these two integrals because they're with respect to different variables, and what do we get from that? Well, we get that this is all the same, but then we have a um, whole bunch of integral signs out in front, and what's left? We have f of x prime f bar complex conjugate of f of x double prime and then we have these two exponentials and these two exponentials are going to add up like this it's going to be e to the i k times it's going to be x double prime minus x prime dx prime dx double prime d k all right well, what should we do now? Um, well, I'm kind of apt to do this k integral first because I, I know that this you know k only shows up in this exponential, and this right here looks like a, another one of those classic delta function integrals. 
and I love delta function integrals, they're super useful, uh, and so that's what I'm gonna do. So if we do this k integral first, what's gonna happen? Well, we have to use that property, that delta function property, and recall that that delta function property I mentioned is that delta of x is equal to one over two pi integral minus infinity to infinity e to the i k x d k. So this, this is our expression for the delta function. Here, if we're doing the k integral, then what's gonna happen? Well, we're gonna pop out a one over two pi and then we're going to, uh, well, yeah, so this, this integral, we're not popping, yeah. So, so this integral, so this one over two pi and this integral are gonna combine. They give us delta of, and here's gonna be x double prime minus x prime. And so, uh, so what, 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 are, what are we left with? We're left with our x prime and our x double prime integrals. We have f of x prime, f bar of x double prime, delta of x double prime minus x prime, dx prime, dx double prime. That's a lot of primes. Um, okay, good. Now, easy delta function integral. If we do this x, uh, x double prime integral first, or, or the x prime integral, doesn't actually matter. Uh, what are we left with? We're left with, well, just, just you know, copy over one of, the, one, of the, one of the letters. So we have f of x prime, f bar of x prime, dx prime. And this whole thing here is also known as minus infinity to infinity, the length of f of x prime squared dx prime. Okay, so we've done it. So starting with uh, this term right here on the right hand side, by squaring it um, with, with our dummy variables and doing this k integral first, we got a delta function out. And then that delta function made everything fall right into place such that we got this this term on the right hand on on the left hand side, and so we've we've done it. We've proven the Planchet-Rel theorem in this case right here. And you can kind of see how choosing a different convention might have messed you up. So if we had maybe a, a two pi out in front instead of a root pi, um, what would have happened? Well, we would have had a one over two pi squared right here, and then that wouldn't have canceled out uh, due to this delta function here. And so you can see how different conventions could mess this up. And so that's something which I'm going to go into a bit more in, in, my, in my video on Fourier uh, transform conventions. But for now, we've got it. We, we have uh, proven this property.